Now on 7 News, a suspicious death investigation is underway in Greenville County. What we know so far. Coming up, a man is dead after being shot by Spartanburg County deputies. Now SLED is investigating. Plus, updates in the Tanglewood Middle School shooting that left a student dead and the suspect reportedly showing up at a woman's doorstep. But first, we're following breaking news just into the newsroom. Multiple emergency crews are responding to a structure fire right now in Anderson County. The details are still very slim. However, fire crews say they got the call for help shortly after 9 tonight for a fire on Griffin Farm Road in Hunia Path. No word right now about any injuries or the extent of the flames. You can stay with us here on 7 News, though, as we learn more. Also breaking at this hour, Greenville police tell us someone has fallen off the Liberty Bridge at Falls Park in downtown Greenville. We don't know all the details right now, but police are there investigating. This is a live look you see right here. Police tell us the call came in shortly after 9 tonight. Someone with the coroner's office tells us they have been requested to that scene. We will continue to update you as we learn more. More breaking news tonight out of Spartanburg County. That's where SLED is investigating in a deputy involved shooting. It happened last night after a neighbor called 911 and reported a man assaulting a woman. 7 News reporter Chloe Salsameda has the latest. Spartanburg County deputies were called to this home Friday night. When they arrived, they say they found a man armed with a hammer and a machete and a woman who had been injured. Deputies surrounded this home on strange courts Friday night. They were called after a neighbor said they saw a man assaulting a woman. Well, I happened to go out on the porch and seen the light on and uh, seemed like they were having an argument. The man has been identified as 63 year old Jimmy Ray Whiteside. When deputies arrived, they say Whiteside was holding a machete and hammer. They ordered him to drop the weapons. They were screaming and yelling, get on the ground, get on the ground. He wasn't listening. Whiteside didn't drop the weapons and deputies shot him. He just snapped. Yeah. You know, he had times he'd snap. I don't, I don't know what it was or what caused that. He just got out of his character. Rodney Burnett is Whiteside's brother in law. He was there when the shooting happened. He says Whiteside and the female victim were related to each other. They were both taken to the hospital. The female victim is expected to be okay, but Whiteside died from his injuries. In my opinion, the law had no right to shoot him. They could have tased him. My son asked him to tase him. They went not tase him. He came up here and shot, got in the car and left. Holy shit. We reached out to the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office, but they declined an interview. Sad to see something like this happen in such a good neighborhood, you know. Uh, we all try to stick together. The Spartanburg County Coroner says his team conducted a forensic investigation Saturday morning. Meanwhile, SLED has begun its own investigation into what happened. In Spartanburg County, Chloe Salsameda, 7 News. And this marks the eighth officer-involved shooting in South Carolina this year. Meanwhile, a death investigation is underway in Greenville County after deputies say they found a woman dead inside a home. An official with the coroner's office there tells us it happened on Eastview Road this afternoon in Pelzer. That's where deputies say they found the woman dead, suffering from what they call suspicious visible trauma. An autopsy is scheduled to be figured out the manner of death. An eighth grade student in Lawrence County is facing charges after being accused of posting threatening messages on social media. Leaders with Lawrence County School District 55 say the middle school student used Snapchat to put out the threat Friday. No word right now what that was. Administrators and the school resource officer were immediately notified and the student was searched, but we're told no weapons were found on campus. Deputies tell us that student has been arrested and charged. That threat comes after a school shooting in Greenville on Thursday that left a 12 year old dead at Tanglewood Middle School. A woman who lives near the school tells us the suspected shooter ran to her house to hide. It was all caught on her security camera right here. Ellen Griffin says she wasn't at home when the suspect tried to get inside, but she was able to speak with him through the camera on her doorbell. She claims he told her there was a shooting at the school and he was scared and that he asked her to call his dad. Griffin then spoke with a detective who told her not to say anything. While watching the suspect, Griffin believed something felt off. He just mostly come, he would grab his head and he would 
would go down his face and he kept peeping around the corner, but he would jump back. And I, and I just thought then, I said, wonder was he the shooter? Griffin tells us the suspect was later found hiding under her deck with a gun and that the whole situation is heartbreaking. We do not know the identity of the suspect due to him being a minor, but officials say he is being held at the Department of Juvenile Justice in Columbia. And more than a handful of Greenville County parents and students have security concerns following that school shooting. Church leaders gathered Friday morning asking for metal detectors in the school, a request they tell us they have been making since 2016. The Greenville County School District spokesperson says they reevaluate these options after incidents happen, but these community leaders believe the time for action is right now. It raises, uh, raises your consciousness of where you're going and what you have to do before you get there. And I think it will do the same thing for those children, especially those who have the propensity to put a gun in your book bag and go to school. Who does that? National school security experts say most schools across the country do not have metal detectors. And switching up gears, a nice day outside, and it sounds like there could be more of that in the future. We're joined now by Dan Bickford, and it, it was pretty on par. Is this average temperatures? This a little time bit here? below average today, okay, thanks to the layer of clouds that came through this afternoon. We had some sunshine early, we had some sunshine late, and then we kind of cleared out for some. We do have one last batch of clouds that will swing on through this evening. After that, we should be mostly clear across the area. Temperatures mainly in the 50s, a few 40s in the mountains, and down toward Greenwood right now. We'll continue to see those temperatures drop through the 40s. We'll end up in the low to mid 40s across the upstate, upper 30s and lower 40s tomorrow morning in the mountains. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. Should have our highs near 70, maybe a few lower 70s. We'll be looking at a couple lower 60s in the mountains, and we're looking at some weather changes for the upcoming week. We'll talk about those coming up. Dan, thank you. Well, Greenville picked up steam today after a two-year hiatus because of the pandemic. The Imagine Upstate Steam Festival returned to Main Street. Kids of all ages from kindergarten through 12th grade got to experience interactive exhibits featuring science, technology, engineering, art, and math. The event was free to explore and only required a curious mind. I was just sitting down, my grandma was telling me, hey, this is really cool, like, science fair type stuff going on in Greenville. I was like, okay, let's go. Sounds fun. So much interesting things. Like, there's a transmission over there, and there's drums over there, and there's a robot that picks up a cube. The festival experience was facilitated by local businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. And it was a good morning to kick off the 2022 farmers market season at Northside Harvest Park in Spartanburg. Nearly 50 vendors were on hand for opening day. As a producer only market, shoppers are able to find all kinds of local goods, ranging from veggies, meats, dairy, bread, and other artisan crafted items. Opening day is always a great day. Um, last season I did awesome on, on the first day on opening day, so I'm looking to do well again today. Um, the, the customers that come by, they are just awesome. Everybody is so friendly and so supportive, so I'm glad to be here. It is a great opportunity. And if you missed your chance to stop by today, no worries. All those goods, plus various food trucks, kids' activities, and entertainment will be featured each Saturday from 8 until noon through December. Next on 7, the latest in Russia's war on Ukraine. As Ukraine's defense minister says they have regained control of the capital region.